And that's, let's talk about methane. So, the Nord Stream pipeline, uh, when it was blown up, um, that was a significant release event of methane, right? It was, it was a lot of methane that, that released into the world, um, estimated at about 500,000 metric tons, right? That's a lot of gas. That's, and, you know, when people say natural gas, natural gas is a euphemism. I mean, yes, it is. it does occur in nature if you dig deep enough and stuff, la la la. But it's mostly methane, right? There will occasionally be um, other materials in there, um, butane, uh, ethane, propane, you know, and more complicated stuff, but, but yeah, generally methane, primarily. Now, 500,000 tons, that was a very big leak event, but it's not the biggest leak that we have to worry about. So in the world, um, every year we have enormous amounts of leakage coming from any number of sources. There's, um, well, there's leakage that happens alongside the production of uh, both oil and gas. Um, so some of that gets flared uh, where they burn it off, but a lot of it just leaks out into the atmosphere. Um, there's a lot of it leaks from like just faulty valves or, or uh, small fractures and in pipelines, in storage facilities. Uh, there's also what they call after the meter leakage, which is like basically when you uh, forget to tur turn your stove off or if your stove, you know, is a gas-fired stove and, and it just leaks a little bit, right? And all of this accumulates, right? So in the US, um, mo most sensible countries will have uh, a an inventory of, of gas leakages. Uh, methane leaks, right? Um, or methane emissions, shall we say. And um, the US, of course, is one of those countries. They have their their uh, national inventory of uh, methane uh, leaks and sinks. Um, all, all generally for greenhouse gases, but we're talking methane here, right? So, in their 2021 uh, inventory, which is the one I looked at randomly, um, there were 239 million metric tons of total leakage. Uh, and, you know, most of that was from oil and gas production, uh, some somewhere over 50%. Uh, but then there's all the other categories. And generally speaking, most of it came from the oil and gas industry. This shouldn't be a surprise to anybody. Like, methane is kind of hard to trap and even in the best of cases it's going to leak a little bit um, but there's some stuff happening so both in the US and Europe the, uh, the European Union the two big super regulators of the world there are uh, efforts underway to start incentivizing companies to uh, plug their leaks to not leak um, gas into the environment and the the US uh, version of this, the rules are uh, look like they're going to be um, fifteen hundred dollars fine per per metric ton of um, of methane leaked into the environment. Have you just done the math on that? So if we're talking 239 million metric tons leaky in just one year, then, then we need to add a bit of a conversion factor because the 239 million is actually the CO2 equivalent, right? And this is one of those things where, where uh, pollution becomes a little bit complicated because so when we talk CO2 equivalents in terms of this you know, of greenhouse gases, um, generally speaking, people apply a, a factor of somewhere between tw typically 23, some say 21, some say 25, 26, you know, something. Some say even higher, but you know, 23 is typically the accepted number. And that's, that number is basically the, the factor of heat uh, difference, like uh, 
between like how much heat a methane molecule can store versus a carbon dioxide molecule. Now, of course, the reason that people don't agree on the factor is not because they don't understand the physics or the chemistry. Uh, it's because they want to uh, either reduce the factor a little bit because it doesn't hang around in the atmosphere as long as CO2 does, or they want to make it into a bigger deal than it is because they um, uh, because it does so much damage in the short time it hangs around, and short comparatively, just to be clear. So, <laughs> so anyway, factor 23. So if we divide that 239 million metric tons uh, by 23, then we get at the um, at the price you should, or the amount you should multiply by 1500, and it's still in the, like, well, it's, it's a large number. Uh, yeah, I, I, so the US is doing this. Europe, European Union is a little bit further behind on the specifics of how they're going to implement this, but it's going to be somewhat similar. Um, specifically, you can expect the prices to be similar. You can also expect the European regulatory framework to be a lot more strict. Um, realistically, the oil and gas industry isn't going to pay for all of this because um, no politician in the world has the guts to issue, you know, to, to really follow through to that level. So there's got to be some outs. But either way, either way, what you're going to see is, you know, this is a big enough fine and a big enough level of, of incentive that there's going to be a lot of serious people in, in those industries who sit up and pay attention. And so the question is, what is the route forward for these industries? Well, for one, no more flaring, right? Um, basically, flaring is bad. It's it's heating the atmosphere. It's wasteful. It's actually like one of the things that doesn't get talked about is that like well, not much is uh, when when you know oil uh, refineries or or oil wells are flaring gas. Um, you know, on some levels, it's a safety issue, but but the primary thing is. It's done because they just can't be bothered to, to deal with all the methane, right? Um, and that means that there's the price of methane goes up. So, you know, consumers could be paying less for their, you know, natural gas um, that they're using for cooking or, or heating or whatever it is people use that for. Um, so... There, there's one thing. Um, so less, less like intentional leakage is one thing. Uh, the other thing is they're going to start instituting leak checks, and they're going to be a lot better at it. Uh, this could be like uh, both on pipelines, on storage facilities, uh, on production facilities. Um, you know, every every part of the process, and that's good. The question is, how is this going to be monitored? And the answer is going to be a shit ton of self-reporting, uh, a shit ton of of kind of um, money being spent on better sensors, better better uh, detection, early warning, you know, things like that. But the other thing is satellites and um, other types of remote sensing applications. So uh, there was a team working for Obama in two thousand. What, uh, what was it, 2015, 2016, that, uh, that they released their findings, um, basically saying that, you know, yes, remote sensing should be become a major thing. And wh what we've seen in recent years, you know, this wasn't just because Obama, but, but you know, that was one aspect of it, is uh, there are more and more satellites being launched with uh, the ability to do um, imaging spectroscopy um, to detect methane. And so there uh, becomes an interesting thing because the governments are going to be looking at that data and they're going to be looking at the self-reported data from the oil and gas industry and they're going to be very, very unhappy with any differences they find. The other thing is the satellites, like even though they're pretty good in a lot of ways, they have limits to the smallest amount of CO2 they can really detect from that far away and their imaging resolution is also limited. So, you know, the pixel size, how many square kilometers one, one pixel of that data represents, right? So, uh, 
that's going to be something that I do not doubt somebody's going to be challenging in courts at some point. Uh, like, oh, you're saying we're responsible for this leakage uh, that you cap captured on, on thing, but we think your error, error in measurement is so and so much, and we think that it applies to such a large area that the nearby freeway, the nearby, you know, something or other, is actually part of the blame there. Uh, and and honestly, I wouldn't be entirely, I, I wouldn't entirely blame a court that uh, kind of uh, sided with them. So. We're going to have to see a multi-method um, measurement, and especially remote sensing, go up and get a lot better. And um, there's a lot of work to be done in integrating all of this stuff and making it into one coherent whole. But uh, one way or the other, we need to stop the leaks. We need to stop uh, all this methane from getting into the atmosphere because, uh, you know, it's heating us up quite a bit. Yeah. Climate change, change is real, kids. You know, don't don't buy the bullshit. Um, but yeah, uh, this is one thing where where you know fixing the problem isn't just good for the environment. It's also good for the people who rely on this kind of gas. And the only people it's bad for is the oil and gas industry. So you know, expect pushback. But but also you know, let's be reasonable because they're um, you know. Uh, it's in everybody's interest that we fix this. So, yeah, I'll stop there. Thanks.